Hi, welcome back to Discovering an Educated Life. This is Megan, and I'm gonna be sharing with you guys today the first six weeks of my father's world, Adventures in U.S. History, specifically language arts. So this is what we're using this year, but if you've used my father's world, you probably know that they don't actually include language arts, they recommend language arts. And this is how the guide is. So it'll just kind of tell you like spelling in English to do that and then there's like um, a reading section scheduled down here for you to write in like what you've read or what your children are doing like read aloud time and things like that. So I will just dive right in to what we have used and are using for this school year. So the first thing is a recommendation of my father's world and it's this language lessons for today. You see this is grade two, I have a third grader. We're just finishing up like the last 20 or so lessons in this to start off the year, maybe 30. Um, that's just what, where we were at. Um, we own this, we had actually done sunlight last year and then we did um, some of this cause I already had it and she was not loving some of the sunlight. So specifically the language arts, we really love sunlight too. It's just some of the language arts we were, um, she was struggling through. And I think it's cause we use third grade language arts for a second grader and sunlight and language arts is sometimes a little advanced on some of their writing and stuff. And so some of that writing and grammar was a little much for her. So then uh, we just picked this up. But so some of the stuff we've done is letter writing. We've done addressing envelopes and obviously and they're gonna show those things because um, it has personal information. Uh, we did quite a few of those, like writing letters and addressing envelopes, but we also did some poem memorization. And then I like that it'll have the poem one day and then it'll have these like extra lessons that are just telling you like keep copying it so that um, you're not like trying to like, okay, we gotta copy this whole poem today. And that'd be a lot for even a third or fourth grader to do it all in one day. And then it gives you more time. And then if she's not done, um, there's a couple times she wasn't done with a lesson like that. I just gave her an extra day and we just pick up with the next lesson because again, in the guide, it's not necessarily scheduled every single day. So it gives you that freedom and that time. It's not scheduled out is what I mean. Like it does have numbers, but I'm not following that. It's very easy not to follow the numbers that are on there. It'll be like lesson one, lesson two. And we obviously didn't start with lesson one, so it doesn't matter anyways. Um, we have verbs, and then we also did like commas, oral composition, capital letters and abbreviations, which again, this is what I won't show you because this is what, um, she wrote those out, like her doctor's name and her uh, mom and dad's names with like Mr. and Mrs. and stuff like that, just to show that she understood how to do that. Um, sometimes there's just a poem to read. This is a Robert Louis Stevenson. She actually knows this one already, but it was just a one to read and have fun with. And then sometimes we'll have picture study. That's picture, um, one of the pictures we did by S.J. Carter. And then this one I liked because on this page it gave me, um, it said to read Peter Rabbit or something from Beatrix Potter in which we have Peter Rabbit from preschool. So we did that. Um, and then I love that like the next lesson was about a rabbit because it kind of tied in together. And that one was um, an oral composition and then it had some copy work below as well. Um, sometimes there's just like, oral composition is like it'll ask a question, they want you to form a full sentence. So like, here's an example. With what is a rabbit covered? And then they don't want you, your child's not supposed to answer fur, they want your child to answer, a rabbit is covered with fur to show that they understand how to form a sentence from a question. And you're not, um, you're not having to like write all that out though because that would be a lot. So it was just like for that age group and I love that about this because they're not asking her to write tons of stuff but I know as her mother and teacher that she knows and we're still working on handwriting in other areas and she's still getting enough writing done but we know, I know that she knows how to form that sentence even if she doesn't feel like writing out 20 of them. Like I sometimes like, for instance, with this one, she will have to write two and choose the two she's gonna write out, but she doesn't need to write all of those. It's just giving her practice forming them and then doing maybe two she's writing out. So that's, that's a good way. Um, I'm loving that about this curriculum, that it's not tons and tons and tons of writing. And where we're at right now is on this poem called If I Knew, and it's a little lengthier. So let me tell you, when we come to those poems, I'm typing them up like this and I'm just throwing them on um, 
I'm just tidying them up like this and just throwing them right on the fridge. Um, what you see behind me is like where we do school and this is like I'm sitting at the bar. So behind you guys, behind my camera is our kitchen. And so I try to keep everything like right in this area. We live in a condo in the city and we do keep most of our like homeschool books and supplies and things like that in the basement. But um, we do our school right here at this table, at our couch, sometimes at the bar, but I can't sit here for too long because there's some health issues going on with my, I have something going on with my leg this year. And um, that's a whole other story, but um, it's kind of been a struggle to get through some of our school because of it. And so I, we just do it at the table and at, um, the couch and outside and so we don't like to be in the basement doing it We technically have a school room down there, but we do maybe a project or something that's like super messy We might do down there. All right next we are doing readers um, My father's world schedules reading time and you're supposed to be reading and they do have a wonderful book list But we're actually using the sunlight readers. We still have left from last year and we probably will buy the next set I prefer um, having this this is super helpful. This is just a sheet from Sunlight um, that tells you like read chapter one and it tells you like an overview. It has cultural literacy. It has questions. And I like that it has like, um, sometimes it'll give you a suggestion and it'll be like this one for instance we read the other day said to find illustrations of things that are in the prairie because we were reading about Cora Freer being on the prairie and obviously there's a fire and she, um, leading up to the fire, the animals were freaking out and she was talking about what she was seeing and those things were elderberry bushes, um, jackrabbits and cottontails, a meadow lark, like stuff like that. So it, we looked those pictures up and it kind of makes it more real and come to life for you. And while I could easily do that without it, I just like having that little sheet here and so her readers were doing so she's done this one she just finished Viking Adventure and she also did um Encyclopedia Brown for her first one for the year so we've done we're on this third one we're on week six we've done spelling by sound and structure that this year is what we chose we've only done three weeks in this because we waited a little to start um, I wanted to like ease in with subjects so we didn't start spelling until week four and we've completed three weeks of it so far. So um, my father's world actually recommends spelling power. We didn't really want spelling power. It seemed like a lot, especially for health issues going on with me. It looked like a lot of reading. It was a little pricey and it's supposed to save money, which if I had more kids in my, but we have an only child, one daughter. And so this was only $13 for both of these teacher's guide and the workbook. So it's very open and go. It doesn't take a lot of prep for me and it, that's just what works in the season. And my father's world actually recommends this for second graders, like the second grade level, but I just bought the third grade level because it just seemed really open and go and I wanted that. All right, so it has a list of new words each week and I love that it's in cursive too. So it gives her practice reading that cursive because we're using cursive for our handwriting this year. Um, and I also like that it has just part A, B, and C. So you see in here, and every day we have stuff we do on our whiteboard that we do have like a the Ikea whiteboard easel in our living room, we keep it in there. And I will sometimes have to write things out on that or she'll have to do something on there, like an exercise. But typically this is like, we do that and then she does respectively like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, A, B, and C. And then uh, we do Thursdays, is always our um, test day and she practices every day. And so she practices just using things like stickers or she'll use um, like she has little pipe cleaners with beads or she does um, just anything you can think of that would be like fun little, she has a Crayola like neon board. She'll use, she has these little cards and she'll make the words with those. So she has different stuff she does, but that's how she practices her words each day. And then she does her test in here, which I don't think I mentioned. This is her binder for her language arts, which I will briefly show you here. Also, we keep, we have tabs, like little tabs. And this one is language lessons. So she also keeps like, this is her poem she copied, the table manners poem. And so she does keep those lessons in here. 
um, like when she did, this is the comma when she was learning to like where to place commas. So her language, her language arts is also in this binder with her science and anything else that's like doesn't have a designated binder, which language art science, it's kind of just like an all in one binder here. Um, and if it gets too full, I may separate them. It's not hard to do. So that's her, that's her binder. And then that's where her test go, her spelling test. We just put them right on in there. And then, um, she also has, which I'm sure you notice, I'm using wide ruled paper in there. So up until this point, she pretty much used, um, I don't think I have it sitting here, but the paper that looks kind of like this, um, like it has the dotted line in the middle. Uh, she used that mostly, but I introduced wide rolled paper this year so that she, I'm going in certain subjects transitioning her. I'm not all in one starting with that. We're also using this. So this is not my father's world recommendation. This is daily six trait writing uh, by Evan Moore. We did writing last year with sunlight. She liked the idea of creative writing and she enjoyed it, but she didn't love the format. And I think I was making her write too much. Like she was actually, what I mean is physically writing, like with her hand, her hand, she'd be like shaking her hand out and she'd be like done writing. So um, what, there was a couple times it was just like literal tears and I was like, it's time to stop. That's not how this is supposed to go. And she's going to hate writing. And I did notice some reluctancy even at the start of this year, but as soon as we really got started, she, uh, you know, she gave up on that. Um, Let's see, so I'm trying to look. I, what I mean by gave up, I'm trying to think of how to put it. Not gave up on like she gave up on writing. I mean like once she realized we weren't gonna be sitting here for an hour or something and having her write out a bunch of stuff for like a writing assignment. She was like, oh, okay, this is fun, I like this. So I just wanna show you the format. There's five days of writing. And so it'll start with this two page teacher's guide and then it'll go into your writing assignments for the week. And it'll have four worksheets because day five is always a writing prompt. And day four is a worksheet that's always something to like build your writing um, to like kind of like a drafting piece to help you put your thoughts and organize them like a thought organizer. And it's always a different one. So I like that. Like, here's an ex another example. They're always different. Um, whatever day four is always going to be something to help you build what you're going to do on Friday. And so what we do is we don't write these out. I don't actually print these. We do day one, day two, and then day three as an oral lesson. I just go over all of the things here. I'm not going to make her write like all these sentences. I will have her come up with them kind of just like we do in the language lesson. So it's building these writing things and each week is an idea. So it's building like these ideas on how to write without her having to physically write it all out because that's daunting. Because if I'm sure most people, um, if you are experienced in homeschooling or in education realize language arts is like multiple subjects put together. So writing as an idea of like composition and creative writing doesn't have to include physical handwriting always. It's like getting your mind and the mental, um, portion wrapped around like a strong idea, adding detail, like the things that are important. And obviously in that we do talk about like punctuation and question, you know, question marks, parts of speech. There are things that get brought up just naturally commas. And I do introduce those as another topic within this. Sometimes it'll like have me introduce the contractions we'll talk about one day or something like that as like they're using them in writing, but I don't make her also write because that's, she's just not a fan of a ton of writing. We do writing in so many subjects that that's just daunting. So what I'll show you, I just have a little folder here. It's her spirit folder and she keeps some of this stuff in there. And sometimes I write these and sometimes she does. And I just copy and she then on Fridays puts them in this little book here. And this book is like, here's her first story. It was secret agent sleuths. And she had to write about um like a story with friends like they're detectives and she just I actually did the writing like she dictated to me for this first story and we just I wrote it all out for her and then the next week she did it it was read people and she was 
uh, writing about her favorite reading place. And so she's done three, I think. And so how I'm doing that is the same way. Like we started this in the beginning, but if like we don't get to it one day, that's okay with this specific because it's, I feel like I'm trying to do it really light so she's enjoying it. And the other thing is if like she's physically writing it out, I'm not going to make her like get it all done. And then the picture, maybe she might need another day to draw that picture. And I'm fine with that too. So that's another, that's taking not a long time, but like it's not necessarily we're doing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Like we just, we pick up the next day. We pick up where we left off and that's how we're treating that. Same with this. This is our handwriting. We're doing the transition year of a reason for handwriting. And a reason for handwriting I love because it includes these beautiful scriptures um, and you get to write them out. So if you're familiar with My Father's World, they actually recommend like Zane or Blazer, I think is like the one most people use in public school, but it's a cursive curriculum. We liked this because this is two years in one for us is how I'm doing it. I'm actually going to be using, um, I used some of the transition at the beginning. It was just review. And then I'm using the actual purple transition lessons in the middle for our third grade year. And that's what these ones are. And it's just a letter each. And then I'm going to be using these red lessons for fourth grade where it has like days one through four and it has the scripture and how that works is like you will send out you'll then write this scripture out on another sheet that you will like mail out or use to send to somebody that you want to send it to anyway so I'm not going to dig super into that I just want to show you this is where on letter U we've worked through A E I O U well we finished letter U we're actually on letter B now and she learned to do her name in cursive and we also did all these review lessons just to make sure her handwriting her formation was where I wanted it to be. And that was really important because we did handwriting without tears for the last couple years. And I wanted to make sure that she was where she needed to be for this style paper, because the paper is different. And I also wanted to make sure the formation was right because as we're transitioning to cursive. And so I will, I didn't love handwriting without tears cursive. I just didn't like how it looked. So I just let her, so she's done like I, O's. she's doing really well and she's liking that so um that's going pretty smooth and as you can see we're only on like lesson six I think but that's again because I'm just I'm I'm introducing it on this I'm introducing it on a whiteboard and then she's practicing on a whiteboard and I've also done her name and we also did some uh review and then she's then doing it on the page and I only give her like five to ten minutes a day to practice that because I get I don't want it to be overwhelming that's the key there not to be overwhelming so we've talked about writing spelling um handwriting language arts like for the sake of language arts and readers her reading aloud and the last thing I do include and um they do recommend you just generally read to your children. I do reading for the sake of literature and I do read alouds for that. And so what we've done so far this year is Peter Pan, we finished the first week of school. We did Alice in Wonderland and we've dug, started digging into the Blue Fairy book and we've read through maybe the first four or five of these and we're loving this. We do these at bedtime. So um, all of our literature is like a bedtime story and if we like, don't get ready on time. We don't get it that night. I mean, that's kind of how I treat it. Like we just do the next one that I have on my shelf. And uh, this one's actually been on my shelf for quite a while and we finally got to it. So that's kind of how I treat that. So we do have some other language arts um, incorporated into our other subjects with my father's world, but I only wanted to dig into what we are doing for the sake of language arts and what we've done for the first six weeks. So another thing I want to show you is I hear a lot of moms like I cannot get my child to sit still while I read aloud and I was mentioning I do language arts just for the sake like literature for the sake of literature this is a lifesaver for that my daughter really does sit and listen but sometimes she wants to do something with her hands and so this has been helpful these little errands thinking putties that they can like it's not slime necessarily it's like it's a putty and then this like playing with this actually builds um, like fine motor in your hands for writing. So I've been letting her play with these. 
and I tried, like, I've heard some people say, I let my kid play with um, figure, figurines, or I let my child do um, like coloring and stuff. My daughter just doesn't focus. She gets really caught up in stuff like that, where she's like super, super interested in it. And she's like so caught up in her own world. She's not hearing what I'm saying. So the idea of doing that sounds great. And for some people it really works. So if that works for you, I'm not telling you to stop doing it. Just for my daughter, that's not um, a very effective way to read aloud to her because she has no idea what I just read when I do that. So thinking putty though is helpful. She focuses more than anything just with something that she doesn't have to think about. She's just moving her hands. Um, and I just put them in her little uh, pencil case that I keep on the shelf behind me and or on her little Ikea car over there. And then that's as easy as it is. Like she can just pull it out when it's time to do read aloud. So I hope that um, that was informative for you if you're interested in using My Father's World and you're not really sure how to like implement that language arts portion of it. That's what we're doing and that's what we've been doing for the last six weeks. If you have any suggestions or tips or want to know more about what we're doing for school this year, just comment below and don't forget to like and subscribe.